I fight for what I believe in. And if that makes me a crybaby, then so be it. There's never been any point in telling Tony Stewart how to do things. I'm going to speak my mind, and I'm not going to back down from that. First time I ever drove anything, that's all I wanted to do. Anytime I could drive the tractor, I wanted to drive the tractor. Then they got me a go-kart to drive around the backyard, and it's been race car, race car, race car ever since. There's nothing else in my life that's ever meant more to me than that. I was racing in USAC. I mean, Kenny Schrader had made it years before, and Jeff Gordon was just just making it. But I don't think any of us thought that it was even realistic to think that that could happen to us. I was content doing what I was doing. I was actually having the time of my life when I was doing that. I lived in a one-bedroom apartment, either drove myself or bummed a ride with somebody to save gas money, and you sold T-shirts at the end of the races hoping you made enough money to buy groceries or pay your rent for the month. And it was just simple. All you cared about was racing and paying bills so you could go race. If you're a midget or sprint car driver and you get an opportunity to go indie car racing, you're crazy to not take that opportunity. Scott Goodyear has done everything to track him down, but he's run out of laps. Tony Stewart wins the Pep Boys 200. You ever worked harder to win a championship than in this race tonight? Oh man, I tell you what, I've never felt like a monkey on a football so long in my life. I ran pretty hard in my 20s. There were a lot of times I probably shouldn't have made it out of stuff that I got into. My dad did the best he could to raise me, and then when I left the nest, I was wild and out of control. And Tony's transition to stock car racing's minor league was just about as unruly. Tony Stewart, his second trip into the fence here tonight. He's about to lose the right front on that machine. So Tony Stewart with a tough night going on. The way I drove open wheel cars wasn't conducive to how you needed to drive a stock car. I'd crashed everything they had had but one car. Then it just seemed like one day I started figuring it out. Tony Stewart off the corner, checkered flag. Tony Stewart, his third win of the season, a new rookie record. 12 wins over three seasons grabbed a lot of positive press, but it was his temper and temperament that repeatedly stole the headlines. Attitude is important. Yeah, absolutely. What kind of attitude do you have? Some will tell you a bad one most of the time. I tend to disagree. For those people that had any doubts and thought that I was putting everybody in danger, you're a bunch of idiots because I was the fastest car on the racetrack at the end. There's a lot of times I wish I'd have kept my mouth shut. No doubt. It was ridiculous to have to race on a tire like this. They can't do any better than that. They ought to just pull out of this sport. Mark Martin and Rusty Wallace and Dale Jarrett would pull you off to the side and, you know, we don't do this this way. We know you came from somewhere else, but this is how we do it and this is why. Tony Stewart is the 2002 NASCAR Winston Cup champion. Tony Stewart is the 2005 champion. After 33 wins, two titles, and a playbook of life lessons, the 38-year-old left Joe Gibbs Racing and bought part ownership in an unproven operation. That's probably the single hardest decision I've ever made in my life. People thought it was the end of me when I left him. They thought, well, he's going to go over there and he's going to run 30th every week. Anytime anybody said, oh, it's the end of him, it, it just sparks a fire with me and we bust our butt to prove him wrong. One of the greatest 10 race stretches in NASCAR history has been punctuated with a NASCAR Sprint Cup Series championship for Tony Stewart. Oh, my God, I, are you kidding me? If this doesn't go down as one of the greatest championship battles in history, I don't know what will. Tony won another championship three years later with driver Kevin Harvick. It was a welcome break during the toughest time in Tony's life. First from a severely broken leg suffered during a sprint car crash, followed 12 months later by another sprint car accident, which took the life of a fellow competitor. That's where the racing community and your racing family comes in, because there were plenty of times that I just was ready to walk away didn't care about the fact that we were in the middle of a season or didn't care that sponsors had contracts. I just wanted out. So I'm glad I had friends that, you know, made me keep pushing. They're like, you've never quit on anything in your life. Why are you going to quit now? 
And so Smoke announced 2016 would be his final NASCAR Sprint Cup Series season behind the wheel. The champ would go one more round. That is, until an off-road mishap left him sidelined for two months. Tony's farewell was shaping up to be a flop. I broke my L1 vertebrae and a blast fracture. The pieces just went everywhere. And I got really lucky because I was three, mil away, three millimeters away from being paralyzed. I'd ran bad for two years and couldn't even come close to winning a race. Just more out of embarrassment than anything. It's like, I thought I was better than that. Maybe the people that are saying I'm old and washed up and no good anymore are right. I don't know. You're just like, man, hopefully people quit paying attention to me and we'll get to Homestead and we'll slide off into the sunset and nobody will know the difference. Tony Stewart, a single car lift off the rear deck lid of Denny Hamlin. Hamlin pulling away ever so slightly right now. This thing's not over, guys. Watch what happens into turn 11 in this heavy braking zone. Here comes Stewart. He gets to the inside. Stewart shuts him out. My goal is to win in my last season. How does that feel, buddy? I wanted to prove to myself that I can still win. It was good for my heart. It was good for my mind. It's special, trust me. <laughs>